Hello, I'm Casey Aiken, and this is 21 This Week. Coming up next, test scores for Maryland students see steep decline because of COVID closings. Despite opposition from county executive, the county council votes unanimously for Thrive 2050 Montgomery. And get ready to vote. Early voting has already begun in Maryland. Our panel of insiders will give you the story behind the story. We're joined by civic activist, Carrie Lamari, and president of the Montgomery County Federation of Republican Women, Lori Halverson. Stay tuned for these stories and more on the next 21 This Week. Here in Genteel, some would say smug Montgomery County, we've long looked down our nose at the surrounding counties like Prince George's because our county government was so well-run, so superior, without even the hint of a scandal. Now, lo and behold, after two months of turmoil and a revelation that resulted in the firing of the entire county planning board by the county council, the council, in a very obvious and desperate attempt to stifle the chaos, voted unanimously for a revision of the county's master plan, which is so universally hated that no growthers like county executive Mark Elrich and pro-growthers like Epic of MoCo are on the same side. They agree because of the lack of transparency by the disgraced and now fired planning board. Carrie, you can't make this stuff up. What's the outtake on Thrive 2050, uh, Montgomery? It's insane what's going on. I mean, for the past three years, the public has been disrespected, ignored, insulted by the, the, the planning board. Uh, you know, you, you, I mean, it, it gets to the point where if you go to YouTube and type in uh, pints with the planner, you get Casey Anderson mixing a, a, a bourbon and not on ice or, or, or some. I mean, it's ridiculous what's going on. And then we have a council who has this dysfunctional plan and, he, and he's, they're voting to approve it. That's going to displace people in the county. It's going to have environmental impact. There's no provisions for economic growth. Oh, hold on here. <laughs> I'm telling you. Everybody in Montgomery County better sit back, hold on tight, because we're we're in for a ride here. Well, we'll we're going to see about that. And, and Lori, was it wise? And I'm going to follow on one of the points that Carrie said. I mean, was it wise the outgoing the outgoing council to vote on Thrive 2050 just days before the start of early voting? And given the results of the election, especially with the addition of two new council member seats. Shouldn't the public, and this has been a topic of discussion between candidates, shouldn't the public have had their voices heard on this important issue? Yes. Yeah, well, I agree with Carrie. So you got a Democrat and a Republican both saying that it was a big mess. So I I don't know what was going on and why they wanted to pass this and rush it through um, right after what happened with the planning board. It just doesn't, it doesn't smell right. Uh, the public that pays attention through all COVID and when most people were working hard and trying to get, you know, keep their families running, uh, a few people were paying attention and they have been heard. But now people are just starting to hear about it and going, whoa, 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 whoa what, what, what did they what did they just vote for? So uh, you can make a change by voting for candidates who um, who say that they were against Thrive 2050, uh, and uh, most of those candidates uh, are in the Republican side. I don't, don't know any Democrat who, uh, other than Mark Elrich, who's saying that they don't support it. Um, you know, I I think that um, the county council meeting that where they just passed, where they passed it, a lot of people, most of the people in that room who were there were opposing Thrive 250, and they, um, you know, they they forgot the council forgot that at the top of the organizational chart, it's not there, them, it's the uh, citizens or the residents. They are the top of the organizational chart. They're the ones that are supposed to be listened to, not the other way around. Um, I don't know what they're thinking. There's a lot of big heads in the county council that need to go. Well, I mean, the question is, I mean, some of those people are, are, are term limited and are gonna be leaving, leaving and um, they've made a decision that will be binding on Montgomery County. Of course, we can go through this whole charade, you know, again, but, you know, there was an, uh, you know, Mark Elrich, the county executive, issued a rather astonishing uh, press release right after the vote and, you know, said that, you know, he promised he'll work with the county council, but he hates the plan. 
Gary, how have the political dynamics of the county been affected by this split between the executive and the council? You know, it's your it's your guess as good as mine. I mean, this kind of reminds me of 1966, but in reverse. You know, the Diggs Council, you've got a lame duck county council passing a pro-growth agenda that literally will alter the face of Montgomery County. It'll affect our over, it'll further overcrowd our schools. It'll dis displace people that live here. The 30,000 residents, 30,000 families live in our suburban communities that rent and rely on affordable, naturally occurring affordable housing. Guess what? We're, we're creating a plan that's gonna encourage landlords to displace these people redevelop the properties and tr double or triple their, 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 their rental properties. This is insane. You know, there's no provisions for economic growth, environmental resilience. These are all just words. And, and you know what? None of it is even considered because all of those things are in another report called the action report. And they didn't even vote on that. Crazy. <laughs> well, it looks like more chaos, but there was one dissenting uh, opinion. And last week, Lori, on this program, former council member and planning board member Nancy Florine opined that there would be little impact on the county because of the plan. Maybe she, she was talking about because of the action report, but it was just guidelines. You know, if it was going to have little impact, then why did the council work so hard to try to ram it through? That makes no sense at all. Um, Thrive 2050 sets the stage for people in neighborhoods to, that have homes to uh, have their neighbor uh, have their, the zoning would change and they it sets the stage for the zoning to change to allow um, duplexes and triplexes right next door to your own house. That will change the value of our homes. And when we bought our house and put our investment into our homes, we didn't expect that our next door neighbor was going to be replaced with a triplex. I mean, this is this is ridiculous, and it's and it's creating density. It's their it's their answer to to, to fixing affordable housing, but it's not an answer. It's not the right way to go. Well, I, I mean, what, what I heard was, you know, in, in looking at um, other counties going through these, the same process, this is an outgrowth of what the, the federal government wants to do with their housing plan. Mm -hmm. So I, I, don't, I don't think we should be surprised. I think right. what's, abstur what's disturbing here in Montgomery County is the manner in which it was done. There was a tremendous lack of transparency and a tremendous um, inability for the public to especially during COVID, to have a voice in this process. So, I I don't know if there'll be political ramifications, but it'll be, it'll be interesting to find out and see. We got to go on to our next topic: test scores. They saw a steep decline because of COVID closings. How should the county respond? Stay tuned for this and more on the next Twenty One This Week after this short break. Welcome back. The headlines are particularly alarming. They show that Maryland students experienced some of the sharpest drops in the nation between 2019 and 2022 in mathematics and reading. Well, the headlines do not ask the question. It's obvious to see that test scores, uh, they're in their steep decline, was a result of the COVID closings and the in um, online learning that we, our students were forced to endure. Lori, you served on the Montgomery County State Board of Education during Governor Hogan's first term. What do you make of these results? Well, first of all, the test that was that, that's being talked about right now is the National Assessment for Educational Progress, NAEP. And it is an apples to apples type of test where you can say uh, the same test that's given across the nation. When you look at our state tests, which haven't been given in the past two years because of COVID, those can be different from state to state. So this is a really good measure of how to compare your state to another state. Well, and it tests fourth and eighth graders. Um, so we... Um, the results are very, very dismal. And uh, if you look at the eighth grade math, for example, Maryland, we're not top in the in the United States. We are number 42 for math eighth graders. Um, and it's just a little, um, the states like um, 
Mississippi and Louisiana, they're just a little bit below us. So we're right there with Mississippi and Louisiana now. What do you think about that? That's really bad. Look what look what's happened with this horrible shutdown and how this has affected, especially our Black and Latino students. It is dismal. And you're going to be hearing from all of our um, Democrat candidates or, or Democrat, Democrat elected officials that, oh, we really, really need to pass and we need to fund our um, blueprint or Kerwin funding um, to get this through. And I and this is just another thing like Thornton, it, um, which was years ago that didn't work. We're seeing the same thing happen over and over again, just throwing money and giving teachers more money. Uh, it's not working. We need a very, very, very different plan. And this is, um, it's, 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 we're in really, really serious mode. It's not just Baltimore City now that's in trouble, it's the entire state. Thank you, Lori. Now, Carrie, call me a skeptic, but I've been hosting this show for 20 years. And every year, test scores are talked about because they continue to decline. Yeah. But now it's gotten to the point where the math rate and the literacy rate, as Lori uh, mentioned, is abysmal. But what can be done? I mean, we passed, the, as, as Lori talked about, we passed Kerwin, that doesn't seem to have an effect. We passed Thornton, that doesn't seem to have an effect. What can be done? Well, I mean, we're, we're doing it, okay? Uh, we, we've, we've now approved this new program called Tutoring on Demand in Montgomery County. Uh, unfortunately, most parents don't even know it's out there. I think you have a percentage of, pe uh, of parents that are utilizing it, but you can get your kids extra tutoring. It's online tutoring. You know, you simply demand it from your, your from your school. They've got to grant it to you. Um, well, that, that only addresses an individual student. I mean, we've got we've got thousands of students now who are below age level in math and liter and and in reading. And how do we how do we rectify that? I mean, if if we are sending eighth graders into high school unprepared, yeah. that's just going to drag the high school down. But that's what we're doing. I mean, the fact of the matter is we made choices, okay? You know, you had 200,000 students that had either one, that one parent had died. You had over a million people die as, as a result of COVID. People made choices, maybe the wrong choices, but they made those choices. The fact of the matter is we did not have a strategic plan for a catastrophic, a catastrophic event like COVID. So when we put our kids in, 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 in our in home class online tutoring, we were prepared. Not only well, and also we've been declining since 2013, way before COVID. So it's not just COVID is the reason why our results are so awful. Um, so we, we need well, to look I mean, not only before COVID as well. Aspect, though, also the mental health aspect. These kids were shuttered in their homes for two years, you know, and uh, it's, it's going to have an impact. How we address that I think we're still learning. We need to bring parents back for accountability now. Parents are just, just out of the equation for some reason now. We need to fix the discipline policy. It's way too lax right now. We need to pay teachers per perform for performance. And we need to increase the boost program, which gives parents money to help them afford a pri private school. That has just stayed stagnant. And um, for some reason, Democrats don't want to support it, even though Baltimore City Democrats are for it. So we need to do things like that, yes, not throw more money at teachers. That's not, you know, teachers deserve a lot of money. I say, believe well, that. We're give, we're that's give, not the only thank answer. You, thanks, Lori. We'll give Carrie the last word. Thirty well, seconds. We also Carrie. have to normalize these kids' lives, right? Get them back in school learning, okay? And uh, do the best we can. Move them forward. Double those classes if we have to. These kids need a need a future. Uh, thanks, Carrie. Appreciate thank appreciate it. Uh, now, I know everyone out there in the audience is sick of the political ads. And are you ready for the election to be over? Well, you're in luck. Early voting started, well, it started actually today on the 27th. Carrie, what's your prediction for, let's talk, let's just talk in general about the governor's race as a start. Look, I, I, I predicted that Wes Moore and Aruna Miller would, would win the primary. I'm still with Wes and Aruna. The fact of the matter is people are tired of the shenanigans like we're seeing on the county council today or the planning board. We want accountability. We want transparency. We want elected leaderships. So they're going to respond to the, to, the, to the public. And Aruna proved that in her years in the General Assembly. And I think that the fact that Wes chose Aruna 
speaks volumes. I said it before on this channel. He won when everybody was kind of laughing at me, but you know what? He came through and I'm going to say it again. I think, I think he's going to win. Dan Cox, unfortunately, pardon me. I think he's too polarizing. Well, let's opinion. hear from Lori about Dan Cox. All right. Okay. You know, Dan, uh, Lori, Dan Cox was on the uh, Larry O'Connor show this morning. And he spoke of returning power back to the parents in education, restoring faith in law enforcement. And these are themes you hear a lot about these days. Are they themes that will resonate with voters, given how controversial candidate Cox has become? Yeah, the media has been unfair to Dan Cox. They, at every turn, say what they can to sensationalize things. Um, it's, it's, it's very unfortunate. Most people, most voters know that crime is becoming a problem. I don't hear much from uh, what Westmore is saying about that. Most parents saw how their child suffered during the pandemic. I don't hear Westmore coming up with some good uh, alternatives to that. Most parents know that um, in low-income communities, they, they want a choice in their schools. Dan Cox is, is saying he wants choice as well, and he wants to help bring that to fruition. And I'm not hearing uh, Wes Moore talk about that. We really um, need to listen uh, about well, who Dan Cox really is and what he really supports, not just what the media wants us to think. We've got to deep dive deeper before we, we cast our vote. Well, he's got an uphill climb, don't you think? It is an uphill climb and it's not, I, I, I think he's an outstanding person and he, and he really is on the right track with um, his message. So I, I, I really think he would be much better uh, a governor and uh, okay. well, our uh, taxes will go up as well with Westmore. And um, even though he says they won't. Thanks, Larry. We, we're, we're, we're running out of time in the segment and I want to pivot to the races that are also affect us locally. Carrie, there are several open council seats and two new districts. Who's favored in those races and what are we uh, expected to see? Traditionally, it's always been the Democrat that's favored. Now, this year, I don't know. You've got two major issues that, that are dominating the political field. Roe versus Wade, Republicans traditionally, you know, they, they oppose Roe versus uh, the, the, the women's rights or, with, with respect to uh, women's rights. And then you've got Thrive, okay? And that, you know, you got to wonder what's going to happen. Democrats are supporting Thrive. Um, this could be the opportunity the Republicans are looking for, not to mention crime, uh, public safety. Uh, the police have been put upon for years, for the past several years. We have a, you know, less than 50 percent of, uh, of the complement of officers that we need. Crime is up. It's, it's a problem. There's so many factors, in, you know, at play. I think Republicans have an opportunity to pick up a seat or two and, on the county council. The question is, which ones? Well, uh, then, then let, let's 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 pivot to. We got about a minute okay. left, Lori. Tell so, voters about Cheryl Riley, who's running the fourth uh, council district. Yeah. And are Cheryl there Riley, any other Republicans I, that have an opportunity to steal a seat from the Democratic juggernaut? Yeah, she's not in my district, but I've donated to Cheryl Riley. She's a firecracker. Uh, she used to. Um, she lived here and then moved away and then has come back and was just really disillusioned to the county. She, she thought, what this is not the county that I remembered growing up. So she's very upset with the anti-business, anti-American, anti-police and pro-socialistic policies of Montgomery County. And she's she's one of those people and she, that- And she moved back? <laughs> well, she, I, I, I'm not real sure. You know, maybe she'll move after. I don't know why she's. We only got thirty but, seconds, yeah. Lori. But I, anybody, I think, anybody um, else? You know, she's out there. Okay. Get a message that people in her area, um, you know, Silver Spring, uh, Kensington area, have not heard people speak like her. So I hope she runs again if she doesn't make it this time, because she really has some some wonderful messages that people need to hear in her area. Thanks, Lori. I appreciate it, and Carrie. Thank you. I, we, we're out of time. Otherwise, it'd be fun to get into the nitty gritty of the the council elections. Maybe we'll save that for next week. Stay tuned for Parting Shots. shelterpetproject.org.
No problem. We do anything for kids. Yet one in five children in the U.S. struggle with hunger. Help end childhood hunger near you. Learn how at feedingamerica.org. Hey world, I have a quick message. It's about safe driving. All right, let's go. Anytime you're driving, have the seatbelt buckle tight, both hands on the wheel and your phone out of sight. When not in your hand trying to text somebody back, because if you do, your car might get smacked. The moral of the story, just put your phone down. The people on the road will stay safe and sound. Put your phone down, put your phone down. People on the road will stay safe and sound. Yeah. <laughs> Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight he's earned that right. Because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzzed warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. Now with parting shots, Lori Halverson. Yes, well, um, just wanted to point out that my U.S. representative, Jamie Raskin, wrote a letter of deflection um, this week, and it's the perfect example of how politicians spin their mistakes. Um, he signed a letter along with all the other far left Democrats uh, in Congress, and um, he's. I just want everyone to know that he's one of those people that signed that letter, and he wrote a long letter that it, you know, supports the, you know, the fact that the Democrats decided to rescind it. But you know, he did sign that letter, so remember that. And uh, you know, you can vote for a Republican too uh, this time around. Uh, yeah, Gregory Cole's running for against. You got somebody. Is there Greg. somebody running? <laughs> oh yeah, Gregory Cole. He's running. He was in the. Potomac Parade last weekend. He's got my vote. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, Lori. <laughs> Carrie Lamari, the one, the only, the great Carrie Thank Lamari. I have to, I've, I'm going back to the Diggs Council um, comment. It's really important. You're, you're heading to the voting booth this week. Remember what happened in 1966. The Diggs Council was very pro-growth in, 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 the, in the last minutes that Lane Duck County Council chose to rezone Montgomery County and increase you know, density and growth in Montgomery County to the point where we couldn't sustain the infrastructure and et cetera. That's what's happening again, but this time they're displacing your neighbors, okay? Mm -hmm. They're overcrowding your schools. They're destroying the character. They are destroying suburbia. We're not gonna, you, Montgomery County is gonna change. Remember that in the voting booth, don't put these people back into office that are that are that have voted for it. I agree. <laughs> Throw the bums out. Throw the bums out. Change. I want to thank you both for we do need change today. and don't forget to vote. I want to thank the audience for tuning in each and every week to Montgomery County's hardest city political talk show. For 21 this week, I'm Casey Agan. <laughs>